All right then my friends, so in this video, what I'd like to do is take all of our world time logic and this get time function down here and separate it into its own file inside a custom class. And by doing that, what we're doing is making the code much more reusable because then that class can be imported into any file or widget that needs to use it in the future. And it's also gonna clean up this widget as well because then we can remove all of this code, which is good. So, First of all, let's create inside the lib folder a new folder called services. And we're going to put the world time class inside here because after all, it's a bit of a service. We're going out and getting some data. So we don't have to put it in this folder. You can put it somewhere else if you like. I'm just trying to organize our code a little bit. But inside here, I'm going to create a new Dart file and we'll call this world underscore time. So this will be our world time class. Now the first thing we need to do is import a couple of packages at the top that we'll need inside this class and those packages are going to be this one right here HTTP so that we can make this request and also this dark convert package so that we can use JSON decode. So I can actually cut those from this file because we'll no longer need them in here because we're going to get rid of all of this code and I can now import those into this world time file. So let me place them there and down here. Now we're going to create the class. So I'm going to call this world time like so. Now inside we first need to declare a few different properties. First of all, we need a location property and that location is going to be the actual location we show on the UI that a user sees. So a user friendly location. So I'm going to say string and call this location and we'll just initialize it for now. We don't give it a value yet because we're gonna pass those values in via a constructor later on. But let me just place a comment to say what this is. So location name for the UI, okay? The second thing we need is now the time. So the actual time in that location. And again, we're gonna show this on the UI over here. So let me create another string for this and call it time. And we don't initialize this with a value. And then this is gonna be the time in that location okay the next thing I want is going to be a flag now ultimately we're going to be showing a little image or a thumbnail of a flag next to the location and those flag images are going to be kept in some kind of image folder in our project so what we need is a URL to whatever flag we want to use for this location and we're going to store that inside a variable so we'll say string again and this time flag and this is going to be a URL to an asset flag icon. Okay, and then finally, we also need a URL for the API endpoint. Now, if we look at this request over here, this is the URL and this is the location in Europe and then London. So that's part of the URL. And that's what we're gonna store inside this thing over here, this new variable called URL, so string URL. And that is then going to be tacked on to this thing over here because that is going to stay the same in the API call all the time. This thing over here is actually going to change. So that will be the thing that will update every time we create a new instance of this world time class and we'll store that inside this property called URL. So we'll say this is the location URL for API endpoints. Okay. So then now we have those properties, we also need a constructor. We'll do that in a minute though. The first thing I want to do is bring over this function over here, this get time function, because all of this now is going to be inside this class. So let me cut that from here and let me go over to the world time and I'm going to paste it in and we will need to edit this a little bit. Let me just get rid of that for now. So we're still making this request right here but now instead of hard coding this I'm going to pass in the URL here so instead of this thing right here we pass in the URL so instead I'll delete that then dollar sign URL okay so that should still work once we pass this value into the constructor of this class that should be fine this is still fine as is because we still want the data in a format that we can use it in and we're still grabbing the values that we need right here as well that's absolutely fine and then down here, we're printing now. We don't really need to do that anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that for now. And what instead I'm going to do is set the time property up here based on what we get down here. Now, I said that the time property is going to be a string. So this down here 
once we've finished with it is a date time. So what I'm going to do is convert that to a string and set it to this property over here, the time property. So let me come down here and I'm going to say time, which is this variable is now going to equal to now, which is this thing we have right here, the actual date time. And I'm going to use a method called to string to convert that to a string. So now we're storing this inside the class itself, okay, in that property. So let's do a little comment to say that, set the time property. And that's all we really need to do because when we create an instance of this class in the future, we're gonna pass in this value to it, so that will be set. We're gonna pass this value to it, so that will be set. And we're gonna pass this value to it, so that will be set. This is now being set once we call the get time function and it's been set down here. So now all the properties will be set. So now what we'd need to do is create a constructor. So let's do that right here. So world time is the same name as the class itself. And then inside this function, we're gonna use named parameters. So we can just assign those values by saying this dot location. So we'll pass that in as a named parameter called location. And it's gonna auto assign it to this variable right now. Then it's gonna be this dot flag then it's going to be this URL. So we're expecting in the constructor to receive all of these different values when we create a new instance of this world time class. So now we've done that, what we could do is actually create an instance of this class. And the way we do that is something like this. I'm going to create it down here to begin with, just to show you, we create a new world time variable so we say the type first of all which is world time then the variable name i'm just going to call this instance but you could call it what you want and we set that equal to a world time instance now we need to pass in those named parameters and they were called location flag and url so let's first of all say the location and the location is going to be the UI friendly location. So not this thing right here where it says Europe forward slash London. It's just going to be London, for example, or Berlin. So let's do that. Let's say Berlin. And then next we could say after that, the flag property is going to be some kind of image URL or at least an image file name. So we'll call this Germany.png right because it will look over here for our image assets and find this germany.png file eventually when we use it and thirdly we're going to pass in the url which is the api endpoint over here so that would be something like forward slash europe and then forward slash berlin so let's go down here and say the url is europe forward slash berlin okay so that would essentially create us now an instance of this class and it would set all of these three properties and then when in the future we said down here if I go to the next line instance dot get time it's going to run this function over here it's going to make the request based on the URL that we pass in and set right here get the data do all of this stuff right here and then it's going to set the time property at the end and then in the future we could use that time property on this instance. So let's now get rid of that. And instead, let's go to our other file over here, loading and update this because now what we want to do is import this class and use its functionality. So let's go over to this file and do that. So the first thing we need to do is import that file. And I'm gonna do that right up here. So I'll say import, and then we want ultimately the services thing over here, world time services, and then forward slash world underscore time dot dart so now we're importing that file and we can use it down here so at the minute inside init state which runs when this widget first loads we're trying to run this function get time but now it no longer exists over here instead what i'm going to do is create a new function so i'll say void because it won't return anything and it's going to be set up world time now this function inside here is going to create a new instance of that world time class so i'm actually just going to copy this dude or cut it and then save this and paste it over here so let me paste that in and now we have this instance right here of this world time class right and we're passing this data in so now what we could do is use instance dot get time like that and that is then going to run that function inside 
this class over here, get time to get the time and set this property. Now, first of all, we need to update this function call to be this function call. So let's change it to be set up world time. So once again, let's just quickly go through this. But before we do, let's just correct this typo. It should be world, not word. Okay, so when we first load up the app, this loading screen loads first, right? And then when this widget starts, we run this function once and we're calling this setup world time function. When this function runs, we're creating a new instance of the world time class and passing all of this data in. Then we're running this function down here, instance.getTime. To go out, make the request to that endpoint, get the data and set the time property up here. So now we should have access to the time property. And you might think we could do something like this, print and then instance.time because now we have access to that time property. But actually we don't yet. And this is not gonna work because remember when we call this function, this thing is asynchronous, this whole function. And this whole operation is gonna take some time to do. It might take two seconds to do because we have to go out and reach the data and bring it back. So if we try to print something straight away, then it's not gonna work because remember, if we run an asynchronous function, this doesn't stop the code from carrying on. It just does this in the background and then the rest of the code carries on. So it's gonna then try to print the time before we even get it back or set that property. So what it would be nice to do is to maybe put an await keyword in front of this. So then we're waiting for this to finish before it carries on and then prints the time and we use the time. But we're getting an error right here at the minute. And that's because we're not returning a specific type that we need right here. If we want to use the await keyword in front of a custom async function that we create, and this is asynchronous, that's absolutely fine, but we have to place the future keyword right here and then surround the void in angle brackets. So this is telling Dart that the function is temporarily gonna return what's known as a future. And a future is a bit like a promise in JavaScript. And it means that it's a placeholder value until the function is complete. It essentially wraps our void type right there and says, look, at some point I'm gonna return void, but only when this asynchronous function is fully complete. So the future is a temporary placeholder value that kind of lets Dart know when an asynchronous function is complete. And if we want to use a wait on a custom function like this, we always have to put a type of future in front of our asynchronous function so that our await keyword over here, right here, so that this knows when that asynchronous function is complete and then it can move on, okay? So if I go over here and save this now and then come back over here, we still get an error and that's purely because now we're using a wait inside a function which is not declared as asynchronous. So let's just pop async right there and that will sort this out, okay? Because remember, if we wanna use a wait inside a function, that function has to be declared as asynchronous. And by the way, when you first start to use all these await and async keywords and futures, it might seem a little bit overwhelming, a little bit complex, but honestly, once you've played around with it a few times, it becomes second nature to you. It's very similar, like I said, to promises and async and await in JavaScript. But anyway, now we have all of this function set up. Now's the moment of truth to try this out. So I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna go to the run panel and do a hot restart. So if I do that, then hopefully, we are eventually gonna see this thing printed out down here. So this is the time that is printed out. So we've loaded this widget, we've fired this function, which is asynchronous. We're creating an instance of the world time class, passing in all of the information. Then we're firing the get time function, which is now awaiting the response over here before we move on. When we get that response and we set the time inside the instance, then we're finally printing that time. So now what we could do is actually output this time over to the UI somewhere if we wanted to. So what I'm gonna do, in fact, is a quick example of that. I'm gonna over here create a string inside this state object in the loading widget. And then I'm gonna call this time, but you can call it what you want. And initially I'm gonna set it to be loading. So 
Now down here, what I'm going to do is output this variable. So instead of outputting this text right here, what I'm going to do is first of all output a padding widget. And then inside the padding, I'm going to do a padding property just so it moves down a little bit and we can see this more clearly. And this is going to be edge insets and it's going to be all and then 50 pixels of padding all the way around. Okay, and then finally, what I'm going to do is a child property, which will be a text widget. And this will output the time data that we declared up here. So let's just output time in here like so. Okay, so when this widget first starts, the initial value is going to be loading until all of this stuff is complete. Once we get the data back and we move on to this thing right here, what we're going to do is use set state to update that time property. So I'm going to say set state and then inside this we need a function. And that function is going to take the time property and now set it equal to instance dot time, the thing that we get back from our class. So whew, let's give this a whirl. I'm going to hot restart again. And then hopefully we should see this change to the time. So when it first loads, we see loading because that is the initial value. And after a second or so, once this is all complete, we see the new value because we set state that triggers a rebuild and we update the time over here. So once more, watch over here. It's very quick. Okay, too quick loading and then this. So it's only there for a split second, but it is there while everything loads and we get the data. So then now we have this world time class set up and we're instantiating that in our loading widget. Now the idea is that ultimately whenever a user chooses a different location in the future from some kind of list, then we're going to create an instance of this class right here. And then we'll go about getting the time of that location using this get time function method on that class instance. And then we can update the time on the home screen. That's ultimately what we're going to be doing. But first, in the next video, what I'd like to do is look at handling errors in this code.